Hey, good morning, friends. This is Julie Hamilton. How's everybody doing with Life Builders? We're bringing you simple tips to build a strong and healthy life on. I hope you're doing great today. I know the week is just getting started. Hope you're having an awesome week. If you look a little more tired than usual, it's because I just got back from a run. I'm trying to take up running again. So um, if you're like, why is your, don't have your usual energy, that's why. Um, but I want to talk today about something that's very real very honest, very vulnerable. I don't talk to you guys about things that I'm not going through. So every topic that is on this podcast, on this show, on that I'm posting is something that I'm walking through. And I share this particular topic because I'm thinking how many other people are walking through this? And you need to know that it's going to be okay. Well, we're watching this show called The Selection, and The Selection's on Netflix. So it's just crazy people. So what it is is, you know, the training that SEALs go through, Special Forces, Army Rangers, and the SEALs, and the other one um, go through. Good morning, Sheila. Great to see you. Well, it's this training, but it's 30 civilians that have volunteered to do this training. And so you guys know how crazy that process is. And yet these people are civilians. They're just volunteering because they want to find out, you know, what they're made of or they want to prove something or prove it to themselves or whatever. And we've been watching this process of how gradually and sometimes quickly the, the trainers, the instructors are literally stripping these people down to the bare minimum. They're taking away everything, everything they thought, they're taking away all their strength, they're taking away um, all the things that they relied on, their appearance, their it, things of control. They're stripping all of this away, but it's so that they can rebuild them in the way that they want to be. And some of us, I think, are at that phase. I'm in that season of my life, and it's funny because I've talked to multiple people who are also going through this season where you feel like, everything is stripped away. Like if you looked at my heart right now, my heart is sort of raw and open and more honest with myself than I've ever been. And you can see that on my social media, on my Facebook and stuff, because what you're seeing is that as God has got me in a place where I'm digging a deep dive, taking a deep dive into motivations and digging deep into why do we post the things that we post? Am I posting this because I want somebody to think that I'm important? Or am I posting this because it's gonna help somebody? Am I posting this because it's out of habit? Or am I posting it because it's a, an issue of being available to help someone else and that's the flow of my life? What happens sometimes is we are in a season where God is breaking us down. I felt that since September 2nd. Um, for those of you who kind of follow the Jewish New Year, I wonder if it has something to do with this Jewish New Year that we're in 5779. That's the year um, that we're in in the Jewish calendar. It started in September. And I feel many people are being brought to this place where we're being stripped down to the essentials of who we are. Because, not because God is mean to us or not because we're wrong, but because God is wanting to purify the things that are in us. When you have a fire and you have gold over the fire, that's how you bring the impurities to the top is you um, let the heat bring on to the gold. You put the heat on the gold and the impurities rise to the top. And I feel like in this season, God is even saying to us, what are your motivations? Are they what I want them to be? Stop doing things out of habit. Let me direct what you want. We don't want to be just on autopilot all the time. We need to be in the place where we are listening to the guidance of the Holy Spirit and we are um, receiving what he is telling us to do because we don't know what's in the days ahead. And and we have to get rid of our pride, get rid of our, even our self-deception. And I'm talking about myself here. I'm not talking about anybody else. But even the things that I may say to myself that make myself seem better to myself than I actually am. And if I get down to the heart of it and I get down to, I have this journal I've been writing since September and it's really like the gut wrenching, hard things to look at. This is really my motivation. If somebody invites me to go to somewhere um, down in LA to this filming 
and I really want to go, but why do I want to go? Do I want to go because I want people to think that I'm important? Do I want to go because I want my friends to see me on the screen? Or is my motivation better than that? Well, right now, I'm just saying, I just feel like God's saying, no, we're not going to do that right now. And, and that's the things that we have to be exploring right now. When you're stripped down to the very basics of who you are, to the very bottom of who you are, it's not because God is mean to you. It's not because he wants you to walk through sorrow, even though it feels sorrowful and it, it hurts and it's painful. It's because he's stripping away the things that are weighing you down. He's stripping away the things that are keeping you from the places that you need to be going. He's taking off the, the burdens. He's taking off the facade. He's taking off the shell of what we've created of what we think people want to see of us or what we want them to see. And he's saying, let me get to the heart of the person right now. I, I want to be there. I want to walk with you. I want to purify you. I I want this to be pure gold so that when you stand up and when you build up on that, that it's going to be a solid foundation and you're going to be able to walk where I want you to walk and you're going to be able to do what I want you to do. And it's not going to be because your motives are wrong. It's going to be because your motives are right. But he has to strip us back just like the Navy SEALs. They have to strip the soldiers of everything, everything that they think they are. And then they start rebuilding from there. And you can see them layering up and they're where they're starting to believe and teach them that you can do anything. You can do this. This is uncomfortable, but you've got this and you're stronger than this. That is exactly what God does in our lives. He can break us down to that most raw, most vulnerable, most painful, most sorrowful place to where he then begins to build the foundations of your life of this is the right thing, this is the right motive. I wanna build something strong, but I can't build it on sand. I can't build it on shaking things and shaking ground where whatever you thought you were, or whatever you want people to think you are, that's not really what I'm calling you to. So if you're in that place and you're in that, that season where you're walking through the reshaping, you're walking through the mold, I just want you to remember what God does with dust. You feel like you're broken down to dust. And you're like, what could God do with this dust? I'm so finely ground into pieces that I can't really picture that God can do anything with that. But you know what he does? He makes clay with dust. He makes new things with dust. He made the humans out of dust. He takes the clay and he adds the water to it and he makes it into a new creation and he shapes it in the way that he wants it to be shaped. I know this topic is radical. I know that I'm just being straightforward and blunt about it, but I want you guys to know if God is breaking you down in this season and if you are in that place, that it's not bad. It's actually probably pretty good for you, even though it doesn't feel good, but you're learning more about yourself you're learning more about God. Just be honest with yourself. Um, Sheila said, yes, I've had, I am walking through this and I've had things and people stripped away and it's painful, but I want God's purpose, but it's painful and sometimes lonely. Yes, yes, you have to be vulnerable, sister. I I, I am 100% there with you. It, it is very hard. It is very hard to question everything, but you know what? The seekers of God, you know what they're doing? They're asking questions. And they're not afraid to go into the places of self-discovery because they realize that there's something better on the other side. And it's not, there's nothing wrong with asking the questions that are gonna lead you to the places where you depend on God, where you depend on Jesus and you know who you are with him and who you are without him. And there's nothing wrong with that at all. And I was listening to a podcast this morning, Journey Woman, about intentional questions. And Jesus asked questions all the time. God asked questions all the time to, to help people discover more about themselves. So if you're asking questions of yourself, it's not a bad thing. It's helping you discover more about yourself. And yes, Sheila, it is painful. And it is sometimes lonely. And it is hard to be vulnerable. But that's what we got to do, sisters. We gotta go through this and we stick together. We encourage each other and lift each other up because you need to know it's not bad. God is working in you and that the pain that you feel, the sorrow that you feel, like I feel it in my gut right now. That's just the season of life that I'm in. Um, 
just because I have to let go of a lot of things that I love or people that I love. Um, it's okay to be there. It's okay. Because it just shows us that we need Jesus and he's the one that can take care of those things. And he's the one that can build us up in the places we need to be built up and to be real and honest with ourselves. So anyway, I that's all I have to say today. I can't tell you much more about that except for my own experience, my own story. And I know some of you are there and just walking with you. And I think it's good. Um, oh, Sheila said, reminds me of that verse, Galatians 6, 9. Don't get weary in well-doing. I'm so glad we hold each other up and pray. I love our church. Me too. So I, yeah, don't get weary in going through this process. That's such a good word because it's a good process. And, and before you know it, God's going to be building you back up and then sending you into your next thing because you're ready and you're prepared. I felt much like... Um, for me, the last, since September 2nd, have been this, God was speaking to me about this moment in John 21, where the disciples don't know what to do. Jesus was crucified. It's like a week later, and they're like, what are we going to do? Oh, I guess I'll go back to the things that I knew before. So they're like, okay, well, I guess we'll go fishing. Guess what happens? They don't catch anything. They're doing all the things that they've known how to do before, but it's not working. They don't catch anything on their own as they go out. But I love this part that Jesus is on the beach making them breakfast. They're, they've worked all night and they're tired and they come in and Jesus is standing there and he helps them catch some fish and stuff and it does a miracle. But the, the part that stood out to me is that he is there making them breakfast. He was cooking for them and he says, come on, come and eat breakfast with me. And he's saying this invitation to come. And that's the moment where he says to Peter, hey, did, did you, did you, if you, do you love me? Then feed my sheep. And he gets this restoration. So he's saying, come on, come and fellowship with me. Here's the restoration. And the next time that we see Peter, it's 120 days later, and he is preaching at the day of Pentecost, and 3,000 people get saved. So that's the next time that we see Peter after that moment where he's broken down. They've gone back to doing what they know how to do, but it doesn't work at all. And so they've taken They've received, they've had the rest from Jesus. They've received the restoration. And then he does something in them that next 120 days where they start to realize they, he's building something in them. And then when you see them emerge at the end of that, it is something like incredibly powerful um, that we've never seen in history before. So anyway, I think a lot of us are just in that season where it's, we're in that 120 days. I think that's where a lot of us are at. So don't get weary. Like Sheila said, don't get weary. Um, the breakthrough is coming and it's going to be good. And the thing is, you're going to be prepared when it comes. You're going to be more ready than you were before because God is doing something in you that's preparing you. Be vulnerable, get a journal, flesh it out, spend time talking to him, spend time listening to him, and you're going to be prepared for whatever is coming your way next, just like Peter was prepared at the 120 days. And then he was like, when he blew everybody's mind and God used him in such a powerful way. So hope that makes sense. But I love you all. Mwah. Have and an awesome I, day. Sorry. Can I just say, she did, said all that without a script. So. <laughs> all right. Go live your big, amazing, beautiful lives. I love you all. I will see you soon. Bye.